Love Talk Radio. Hi, all you all. This is the Girl George and the Dragons Radio Show coming from Sunny Berkeley. Boy, is it hard in the motherfucker out here. I'm, I'm broadcasting today in front of Starbucks because my computer went down at home, so God only knows we'll be able to hear anything. But today we got two of my favorite guests in the whole world. They are making a movie about uh, the downtown L.A. Uh, underground art scene back in the 80s, 90s, the 2000s, back when I was at El Bar and then make a movie about the American Hotel up above where all the artists live. We've got uh, Stephen and we've got Pamela. How are you, boys and girls? <laughs> we're, we're, doing, we're doing great. It's, it's, it's hotter than heck here in L.A., and uh, we're just working on our film. What's the name of yep. your film? It's called Tales of the American. It's called Tales of the American about the American Hotel and the Arts District. It's place in the Arts District. So how long have you been working on this film? We started shooting this film uh, in November of 2013, and we have been shooting uh, straightforward for about nine months now. And we have got some incredible stories. We've interviewed over 110 people, and it's just been incredible, the, the turnout of people and the stories that they've told, and it's, it's really been amazing. Much, much bigger story than we ever thought when we first started. How are you going to fit 100 people into two hours? Well, you know, that's the magic of editing, but uh, my editor is Pamela Wilson, and she can tell you what she's going to be doing. Well, um, I'm going to be trying to um, weave them together like a tapestry, everybody's stories about different aspects about the hotel. Um, it's going to be a challenge, and uh, when we started, we didn't realize we would have so many people, so uh, I have to figure out you know, how, how to tell the story with um, trying to get everybody included. But so far, um, so far, people have been so supportive that it's been uh, it's been a real joy doing this so far. Now, yes. Pamela Wilson, you used to be the editor of the City Magazine in L.A., the L.A. Times, right? Uh, n- not exactly. I wasn't. I was an editor at the L.A. Times. Um, I was worked in the Valley edition of the L.A. Times, and then I worked on the Foreign Desk of the LA Times and the Metro Desk and actually oh, a little sports cool. too. Yeah, I I, I moved around. That. I I was at the Times for 22 years. Wow, that's good. It was Most it was a great and high in in the publishing business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a great uh it was a great opportunity and it was a great time for me and and uh, I enjoyed my time at the LA Times. 
But now I'm on a different chapter making a documentary film, so that's an exciting thing, too. Now, you and Steve are married. How long have you been together? Tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow, September 8th, will be our 30th wedding anniversary. Wow. How cool is that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I, uh, you know, I tell everybody that, uh, you know, that my 30th wedding anniversary is coming up, and I tell everybody that uh, the first 29 and a half years is the hardest. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should say the first 30 is the hardest, but uh, you know, it's been an adventure. It's really been an adventure. One of the things that I think the both of us, uh, uh, we, we like working on documentary films. Uh, I, uh, I started out making art, art films, and uh, the last film we made was called Young Turks, and I made it, I shot it from 1977 to 1981 and showed it a few times. And uh, then put it away for 30 years, and uh, our 20-something years. And Pam, a few years ago, Pam decided that she wanted to, you know, clean it up and, and, and you know, do some touch-up editing on it and put a new soundtrack on it. And she did a great job. And right after, right after that, you know, we wanted to do another documentary called uh, About the American Hotel and the Arts District Downtown. And there's a lot of incredible people, such as yourself, who <laughs> perform downtown. There's people like Matt Gleason, uh, who have, uh, you know, did Coagula magazine, and they're still doing, they're still active today, like, like you. Uh, Matt Gleason is still active. He's, he's still, uh, you know, just, uh, he's, he's um, you know, a, a great guy, and he's still doing really, he's still active in the art community. In fact, he's, you know, with Coagula Curatorial, he's doing great projects in Chinatown. And it's those kind of people that we interviewed for this movie. And I got to tell you, we started out with a short list of about 25 people when we started in November. And as we started, people started mentioning other people that we should talk to. And suddenly, out of the woodwork, people were calling us and saying things like, hey, I was there in, in the 70s. I was downtown living here, and it snowballed into incredible people who have come forward and wanted to be interviewed. And we've just sat down with them. Each interview is about an hour to an hour and a half long. Sometimes people have gone two hours. But it's been this incredible exploration, and the stories that they've come up with uh, are just amazing about what they did when they lived at the American Hotel or what they did when they lived across the street in another building. And we have been very fortunate that so many people have come forward with videotapes and photographs and film. And uh, they've, it's been an outpouring that we, we never imagined. You're going to have to make it into a TV series. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> we've discussed well, that, actually. <laughs> yeah, we've got... Over we we've been shooting with three cameras at one time. Sometimes we've been shooting with four cameras, and I would say we've got uh, probably over wow, probably three hundred hours or more of interviews oh with people, and, as well but, as probably but, thousands of photographs from the from different eras of downtown. The the reason the story is uh is important to Steve and me is because that's where we met. And uh and thirty years ago uh we met at Al's bar and um I lived in the hotel and uh at the time and our love story sort of, you know, sprouted from that place. It must be great being with somebody you have something so much in common with that you can work together and do art projects with. That must be really fantastic. It is. It has been. It has been. And uh, I have to tell you, people, uh, when we were uh, a few months into shooting this, many people had come forward that we had interviewed, and they mentioned your name. They said, oh, you've got to talk to girl George. You've just <laughs> got to talk to her. Yeah, oh, no, they did. We've got any number of people from Nick Scott of Pop Defect. He's now with the Swords of Fatima. He is a great guy. The whole, the, all, all the guys from Pop Defect have been wonderful, and and, and Nick Scott in particular. And um, they kept they may, he mentioned you. 
Other other a people, lot of have, people been, have. Yeah, a lot of people <laughs> mentioned you. And so I said, Well, okay, I I met you I met girl George. I met her one time for a, all, all of about twenty seconds, uh, back in uh oh gosh, back in the nineties. And um uh, but I didn't really know you. But I knew that every so many people had mentioned you that I knew we had to interview you. And uh when we uh when uh, Raymond Newton, my cameraman, when we came up to Berkeley to see you at the Missouri Lounge, it was just like old times. It was great to, to hear you singing the, you know, the songs. And I, and I have to say, your energy is just as strong now as it was back then when you were singing in Al's bar. <laughs> I've only more. seen that. Yeah, I've only seen the footage, but it looked like you guys had a great time. How did you like the dog? Oh, the yeah, the, the dog is gorgeous. We have a dog that looks just like that. <laughs> yeah. Our yeah. dog Zorro, our dog Zorro is a chihuahua that looks almost exactly like your dog. Oh, that's not my dog. That was just a dog that was sitting there. I put the mic in his face and he barked. Oh, oh, I no, thought it was your never dog. Done that before. He isn't trained well, to I'll, do that. I, I got to I, I gotta tell you, uh, I was amazed when we were filming in the Missouri Lounge and, and we had our camera shooting you uh, during your performance. Uh, you, you, uh, I was amazed at how well you got the crowd going. And you sung your, uh, the, the famous Johnny's Got Herpes. And when you put the microphone in people's faces and, and they, automat- they really got into, in, into the song with you. And uh, I, I think it was great to film you. We want to come up there and film some more. Film, film you again. I'm going to bring Pam up this time. And um, and and, and I really. Dark to film in there? Could you see it? Could you see? Because it was pretty dark. Oh yeah, no, it was dark. We're going to shoot it again. We, we got it. It's pretty dark, but but Ray Newton was able to get you because he's got such a great low light camera. But we're going to okay. come back up. And we're going to put some lights in, you know, some low lights in the bar and make them look real cool. And we'll shoot you again because the, um, the, the neat thing. Ambler? They make them look better if you add some color to them. Yeah, yeah. We can make them any color you want. We can make them red, purple, yellow, whatever. No, no, amber. And... Amber is good. Amber is good. Okay. We'll make them amber, whatever you need. Um, I'm, I'm and, quite but... pale. You know, a stamper is it never going to out. It's so nice. I'm, I'm quite pale. <laughs> Okay, we'll we'll put some <laughs> so we'll put some amber gel light, on it. Yeah, glare like a a light bulb. Yeah, well, it, it, <laughs> it'll, it'll, it'll look great. I'll meet you guys. That was really an adventure that night when you guys came in there. Uh, it was, and uh, you know the, the the nice thing about that place is is it it reminded me a lot of of Al's Bar in the early days, and yeah, I mean me it's too. you know, <laughs> and it's got the same smell. And it's it's got the, it's uh, it's got the same kind of ambiance, and it was really really nice. I love the way you worked the crowd into that song that you sung, where you said "bark like a dog," and and uh, everyone had dogs in the Missouri Lounge, and they were all barking. <laughs> so you not only got the crowd working, you got all the dogs in, in the bar working, and uh, I we can't got wait. that on tape. I can't wait to come to the Missouri Lounge just to smell that smell again. <laughs> oh yeah, there's yeah, a certain smell that. a lot of young that... kids, a lot of young artists. My crowd has always been the same, no matter where I've been. I'm, I'll be seventy two days for Halloween, but my crowd is still, you know, college kids, art students, you know, same old thing. Yeah. It was yeah. great. It it was really, and the interview was was uh, was was wonderful. I I, I really think that, you know, everybody, uh, like I said, for this movie has has uh, just been spectacular with coming out with with their with stories and images and uh we've had an outpouring that we just never expected uh when pam when we first started talking about this when ray newton and myself and pam were talking about this uh a few years ago um we drew up a list like i said of a few people uh and it just expanded greatly and now we're at 110 and we're getting ready to interview people from all, uh, there's people coming in from other parts of the country to, that, are, that are flying, that are coming into Los Angeles just to be interviewed for this movie that no longer live here. Is Phoebe and Mutt going to come out here? They're coming out in October. They're oh, in I don't know. They used to live upstairs. 
I don't know them. Tell them to give me a call. Well, I've been telling them to, to get a hold of you because that, you know, that footage I gave you at Al's Bar, those, those guys that were screaming yelling right before I went on stage, that's been when they were young. And they oh, came yeah. And out to play at the Whiskey Go-Go in October. So I told them I should Oh, okay. You. you also should do S.A. Griffin. S.A. Griffin is very, very important. He's the one who started the whole thing. Started. Okay. Well, we're, and you know, one acting. of the... He's, act, he's an actor. And he's yeah. Know, yeah, he's, I know the he's, name, he's yeah. Into one yeah. Of the, one of the... And he probably got footage, because he, he had some footage back then, too. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've just been... Where it first started. Yeah, well, we've got, we've, uh, you know, uh, we've focused on uh, on the American Hotel, and people have told stories about Al's Bar, but we've also focused on other venues that were downtown. There was a, a club called, uh, there was a club called the Clubhouse that was right across the street from the American Hotel that Alberto Miaris ran, and Alberto has been really helpful with photographs and um and videotape, and we've got him driving his flame-throwing espresso rod around uh, <laughs> around Traction and Hewitt. This big, giant fire truck spewing, shooting flames out of the back of it. And there was also another. There was also another underground illegal club, bar, gallery called Bedlam for 20 years, and it was in different locations in downtown. And so we've interviewed a lot of people that worked at Bedlam. And we've uh, there was another group called Fifty Bucks that was a really great group. Uh, that yeah, uh, I remember them. Yeah, Rolo Castillo I used to uh, was it part on of the, that. On the street. I don't know if I ever knew him, but I remember him spray painting it on the street in front of Al's bar. Fifty Bucks. I don't know if I oh, ever yeah. knew yeah. him. <laughs> Fifty Bucks was a real collection of people, and it was and it's and it's still going to this day. And there's quite a lot of people that that uh, lived in the American Hotel that were part of Fifty Bucks. And it was a it was an exciting place. So there were you know there was Al's Bar, but there was a lot of other exciting places and people that were doing things and active in that art community. You know, and then there was Alberto started uh, where Bloom's General Store was before it was Bloom's. It was a it was a coffee shop called Coffee Strippers, and he made pizza and served uh, espressos in there. And Coffee Strippers was a very active place in the community and drew hundreds and hundreds of people. So there were, there, were, there were a lot of alternatives to even Al's Bar. It wasn't the one and only thing in the neighborhood. There, there was a lot of other activity going on, and, and this movie focuses on that, too. Well, you've got to get Fish Carver, though. Fish Carver was the most amazing act that ever came through L.A. For real, for yeah. real, for real. You've got to get Fish Carver. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, no. Yeah, we we've we're, got his. Concept. We're looking into that. Yeah, yeah, well, we he's we, we we you really really want him. Yeah, he's we got great photographs of him. Two most amazing people that ever came through there. That's like yeah, we got a we got amazing stuff. We've got absolutely amazing uh, photographs and video. And Fish Karm is definitely you know going to be one of those people that we that we probably contact and and sit down with. So we're not done yet. We've got about 10 or 15 more interviews to do, and, uh, and Pam's already at, uh, in the editing room uh, working on the editing. And, uh, oh, I've got a, something else to tell you. We have, um, we've got some great musicians, some that lived in the hotel, some that live uh, in the hotel right now. For example, Jesse that are, that are Easter, doing right? Jesse Easter, who has done a absolutely incredible song called The Story of the American Hotel, and we've gotten him in the recording studio, and we've recorded his songs that he's made just for the soundtrack for the movie, and for, for the documentary. And he has been incredible. He has been a true professional and gotten, gotten there in the recording studio. We've got other great people, like Lightning Woodcock, and he's done... He's, uh, done a lot of music he just had a cd record release party at the uh, at the redwood bar downtown and i would say we've got all together about five or six people that have done original songs about the downtown arts district and the american hotel and so we're going to have an original soundtrack um of original well, music my Al's bar song oh, that we're going to use some of your we're songs we're hoping too. to yeah 
Yeah, we're we're that's what we're hoping to do. We're gonna we're gonna sit down with you and go over your songs, and uh, and and definitely put one of your songs in, in the movie in the in the ha- have it in there as part of the soundtrack. So what are you what are you working on now? What am I doing? This is radio yeah, show, yeah, you, and I play it at the Missouri Lounge every week. So you, my so you're, you're, you're busy. my nephew. My nephew is a is a I think he's a junior now at Berkeley and we're going to we're going to come up and visit with him and and take him to see you at the Missouri Lounge. Is he 21? Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Hey, yes, we'll we'll tell him to bring his dog guard, too. Uh, bounce to check ID. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. yeah. 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 Yeah, he's over 21. He'll he'll love the pool table and the bar. And it, it's yeah. amazing. Uh, the Missouri Lounge is, uh, it's like Al's Bar with dogs. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and they've got, they a, got food, too. Yeah, got they do. And they, they I'll tell you. They got beer. They got hard liquor. They got anything yeah, you want. Yeah, and they've, you can even and they've got those. The they, yep, they've got that whole big back area that's got incredible hot dogs and food and stuff. So they... They really got that place got working. It's really nice. And then after 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 the open mic, sometimes we jam out there. You know, they'll have two or three guitars, and we'll just sit around the table and sing harmonies. That's my favorite part, actually. Oh, that we'll sounds to, great. We'll have to bring we'll bring all of our cameras with us, and uh, we'll bring yeah, our do uh, that. yeah we'll 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 film you with three cameras again up up there uh, at the Missouri Lounge. So uh, anyway, that's what we've been doing. We've been just working on this movie, and um, we've got people that will be filming from Florida, people from New York, people from um, uh, New Orleans that are coming in and uh, are going to be interviewed for this movie. And the Tales of the American is is really about it's about the spirit of the building and the community. And it's the underground and we, art scene, right? Well, yeah, but it's even, it's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. We've even interviewed people who used to live in the hotel during World War II. Wow. And they have, <laughs> they have, they've come forward and we've found them and they, and they tell us stories about what it was like during the 1940s living in that neighborhood and living in the American Hotel. And their stories have, have just been absolutely beautiful and amazing. And and there was no there was maybe a few artists uh, living not living living in the area then uh, artists didn't just start to move there in 1979 and 1980 there were artists there b- beforehand and uh, we've uncovered some amazing stories of those people uh, going all through the 60s the 50s and back into the 40s. And we've been very fortunate to to get them on on tape while they're still alive. Wow! So yeah, it's 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 going to open up and uh, you know talk with their with their stories too, and and things you know we've got we've got great photos of Alphonse Vasquez uh, standing <laughs> in front of his, standing in front of Al's bar in the day. The day that he opened Al's bar, we've got a ma- an amazing photograph of Alphonse Vasquez, you know, standing right in front of the the doorway of Al's bar the day it opened, and uh, and it's just it's incredible. We we found archival photographs that that have never before been seen of the hotel uh, that a that a private person came to us and gave us photographs of the hotel from. Uh, from the uh, from the time it opened, all the way photographs from the 1920s, the 40s, the 60s, the uh, mid 70s, just incredible stuff about the hotel and the neighborhood. And and these are these are private photographs, so they're they're not in, you know. And and it's been really wonderful to to see things like that. So when you get through this movie, is there going to be a big uh, red carpet event in Holly Beard? That's what we're yeah, hoping. Hope so. We're hoping to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's that's a, we we've got a lot of interest right now. There's there are people that are interested in showing in showing the movie uh, when we're done, and um, they've and so 
you know, we're, we're right now we're just interested in getting everything in the can in the next couple of months and uh, getting the editing process underway and uh, getting the soundtrack done. And uh, that's, that's, it's just been, you know, it's been great. Now, so where are you from originally, Stephen? Pardon me? Where are you from originally? I was born under the Hollywood sign, right in Hollywood. <laughs> and, uh, oh. and uh, yeah, right there. I looked up out through the window when I was born, and there, there was the Hollywood sign. And, um, when you were born, <laughs> you looked out the window, huh? <laughs> I looked right on, I looked out the window and I said, you know, uh, what is that? And, and I was told that's the Hollywood sign. So, yeah, I but I lived, I you know, was born and raised in Hollywood, or, or I should say I was born in Hollywood, not raised in it, then moved to the San Fernando Valley and lived in the San Fernando Valley for, oh gosh, till, uh, and I lived there till, uh, oh, around late 1976, came to downtown and I got my first studio at the corner of Olympic and Central in downtown Los Angeles. And um, and it's just been a whirlwind of activity since then. What about Pamela? Where are you from originally? I was born at the geographic center of the San Fernando Valley. I am as much a valley girl as anyone could possibly be. <laughs> and I, I did... <laughs> and I grew up here in uh, Reseda, and uh, and then I moved downtown when I was an art student at Otis in uh, 1980, and I lived at the American Hotel. Did you ever and, see me uh, at Al's Bar? Did you ever see me? You know, I I I worked at the I worked at the bar. I was a bartender in 1980 and 81, and. Um, I don't oh, remember I there there being until 84. I right, I know. Until 84. And after 80, 84 is when we got married, and and then um, I didn't really go to Al's bar much after that. So I didn't. Oh, I don't God. remember ever seeing you, but I also have a really bad memory. So, <laughs> so I could have seen you and just don't remember. <laughs> but I I'm think that I, I think. You forget really. Yeah, I know. I, 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 from what I gather from everyone that's talked about you, virtually anyone that mentioned uh, No Talent Night, of course, mentioned you because th- those things are pretty much synonymous. Um, and uh, and everybody everybody spoke about you with such fond memory that um, I was really excited to to be able to you know see the footage that Stephen and Ray Newton shot of you up there. I can't wait to edit it. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah, and and all the footage. Wear a sword. <laughs> I, I know. I've seen the pictures of the sword. And I also enjoyed uh, watching some of the footage that you gave us. That that was great, too. Well, I don't wear the sword anymore, but I'm still loud. And I guess it's graceful that it's got studs it that are actually more dangerous than the sword. They're about an inch long and they're very sharp. When the artist oh, wow. made it for my birthday last year. Yeah, it was a different time back then when you could wear a sword around or drive a flame-throwing espresso rod down Traction Avenue. That was a different time. <laughs> yeah. There was a lot, a, lot less, of, a lot less scrutiny. Well, yeah, yeah it was... A, it was a, away with it. Next time you come, though, I will bring you a sword. Oh, okay. Well, I might even wear the velvet and the cape and everything. Oh, okay. Yeah. That would be great. Bring Bring the sword... And we'll bring the lights and uh, and the cameras, of course, and and uh, you know it 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 it's uh, going to be one of those things where y- you you examine the neighborhood of downtown and the arts district. And back back in the day when I moved down there in the 70s, and I was down there in the 80s, uh, it uh, it they didn't call it the arts district. All of downtown was actually the arts district. And nobody thought of one specific area at the time. It wasn't until Joel Bloom, who ran Bloom's General Store on the corner of Hewitt and Traction in the bottom of the American Hotel, it wasn't until he really actively started to work with the city of Los Angeles that they started to call it the Arts District. Before then, the Arts District was all of downtown Los Angeles because there's many thousands of studios spread around there. But it's changed a well, lot. I'm not an and artist. I'm a musician, so I, you know, I played in Hollywood well, that, and I played for Central and the the Troubadour and the Roxy and 
and you know the palomino and uh, cantorus and all that. But owls was always my favorite. Owls was owls was perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Owls yeah. was yeah. special. It's, yeah, it's a uh, it's a. Uh, but you know, it's been what has it been? Fourteen years since owls closed. And the neighborhood has gone through a lot of transformations. They, they've had places like in, in Al's, there's been a juice bar, Juicy Beats, and then there was a hair salon, and then after that, uh, Bedlam, uh, Jim Fittipaldi and Bedlam Gallery uh, opened in there for a year. And then there's been the Archway Theater has been putting on plays. And they, I think they've put on over 25 plays in the old Al's Bar okay, location. Dear. We are now out of time. Thank you for calling. This is okay. the girl George and the Dragons radio show. You keep an eye out for the movie, uh, the A Tales of the American, right? Yeah. Right. The Thank story of the American Hotel. Okay. Thank you. We'll Bye. You, alligator. Bye. Thank you. Okay. See ya.
Please don't call it.